हमारे साथ देश के पूर्व मंत्री वित्त मंत्री और होम मिनिस्टर पी चिदम्बरम साहब हैं सर वॉम वेलकम ऑन आई टी वी नेटवर्क मिस्टर पी चिदम्बरम द मोट हर्ड अपोजिशन वॉइस ऑफ द कंट्री द फॉर्मर एम ओ एस द फॉर्मर द फॉर्मर फिनेंस एंड होम मिनिस्टर ज्वाइंस ऑन आई टी वी सर वेलकम ऑन आई टी वी सर कैन यू हेयर मी ये सर कैन क्यूर थैंक यू सर माई फर्स्ट एंड स्टेट क्वेश्चन टू यू जी डी पी नंबर सर डाउन इट वॉज माइनस ट्वेंटी फोर The government is very optimistic. It says we are unlocking the whole country. It was not a national lockdown. We are unlocking as state by state, and uh, the economy will be back on track. Your take on that, sir? The government is whistling in the dark. They said it last year too. Last year, when the first wave was raging, they said this will be over in. 21 days the mahabharata war took 18 days this will be over in 21 days and they said that they are seeing the green shoots hmm. nobody saw the green shoots and the year has ended with negative minus 7.3 the worst performance in any year in 40 years right sir the government must have some humility and some shame that it is presiding over an economy which has recorded the worst growth rate in 40 years something which hmm. all the governments before the modi government has not achieved now this year yes the second wave has started it is more intense than the first wave right sir it has infected more people it has caused more deaths but it also seems to be subsiding more quickly So let us hope that it would subside by the end of June or early July. So at the moment, nobody in his senses, nobody in his right senses, will predict anything more than the first quarter. You can only predict the first quarter. You cannot predict anything beyond the first quarter, because we don't know when the second wave will end, and moreover, we don't know if there will be a third wave or a fourth wave. So anybody who is predicting the future beyond the first quarter is whistling in the dark right uh, sir i would i would quote mr kv sulmaniam the chief economic advisor what he said the fear of pandemic is critical fear will go down by the vaccination process i'll come on vaccination also but he says the fear will come down as the vaccination continues and secondly unlock will create a bounce and will come back mr kv sulmaniam and i quote him sir well i'm very sorry with great respect to the chief economic advisor i have never taken his views and statements seriously he has been wrong in practically every statement last year i wish him well i want him to be correct but i'm afraid the facts from the ground do not inspire any confidence the lockdown is now a state imposed lockdown right sir center can't decide when the unlock will start each state will decide whether the lockdown should be extended or whether it should be restricted or whether it should be lifted so nobody can predict what 30 states will do number 2 the vaccination process is stuttering they have to tell us and the supreme court has asked them today to tell them yes that the vaccine policy is arbitrary it is irrational come up with a better policy and tell us when you will vaccinate i've been asking for the last several days tell me how are you going to get the 216 crore vaccines that are required how much will you get in june how much will you get in july how much will you get in august tell us month wise we will do the totaling it is only totaling seven numbers and we'll find out whether you will get 216 crore vaccines without giving us data without giving us substantial information what is the point of these empty boasts right. that vaccination will take care of everything of course vaccination will take care of everything provided vaccination takes place in tamil nadu a suspended vaccination for 3 days because there are no vaccines jharkhand and goa have said they cannot vaccine vaccinate any more because they have no money so sir, what are we talking I'll, I'll about come to this uh, point sir my supplementary to my first question sir 
on a larger perspective, on a larger picture, we see the numbers, the GDP numbers, the growth rate, globally growing down, sir. Do you think that's the effect of pandemic, except for China, UK, US, all numbers down, sir. But won't you blame that, yes, this pandemic has created the walk and the numbers are going down globally. It's not India, it's a global effect. So, what comfort does it give you? What comfort does it give you that other countries are also affected? I said so in my statement. Sir. The main reason for the economic downside is the pandemic. Hmm. But the other reasons are how you handle the pandemic, how you react to the pandemic, what steps you take, what steps you don't take. America was affected, but the United States has bounced back. It is growing at a clipping pace now. Several European countries were affected, but they've all rebounded. So what is the comfort in saying, I have lost both eyes, but you have lost one eye. What is the comfort there? I'm only concerned with India and what we could have done better and more effectively to contain the fallout of the pandemic. And my charge against this government is this government did the wrong things and did not do the right thing. Okay, sir. Coming on uh, to the point of unemployment figures, 11 plus 9, and inflation also, that's too high. And I quote uh, the Prime Minister, Mr. Modi, he said, Aapta mein afsar. He said that, yes, you have to grow and we would be self dependent But uh, indeed, the figure shows that, yes, unemployment and inflation, it a great, uh, gives a great worry, sir. It is. It's only the government which is denying it. Hmm. He pointed out that last year, one crore jobs were lost. Hmm. According to the CMIE, in April and May this year, we may have lost 2.2 crore jobs. The government does not put out its own data. The only data we have to rely upon is the CMIE data. Why doesn't the government do its periodic labor survey and put out that data? Right. Uh, so if, if I go back to uh, season one of COVID, that's the first wave of COVID, we have uh, seen many of the packages being announced by the finance minister, Nirmala Sitaraman. We have seen in the budget a huge allocation for COVID and uh, the health sector. Do you see this time it was missing? Uh, we, we didn't see any stimulus, any packages or any cash, direct tra cash transfer to the people of the country, sir, during COVID too? In her interview three days ago to some newspapers, sir. she made an extraordinary statement. She said, my budget is a COVID designed budget and the budget is not kicked in. So why should I announce any stimulus package? I was astounded by the statement. The budget was presented to parliament on February 1. Sir. The budget came into effect on April 1. They had two months, February and March, to prepare all the ministries, all the departments, all the spending agencies to prepare to spend. And then they had April and May to spend. Two months out of 12 months represents 16% of the year. So they are two months to prepare. 16% of the time is gone. Hmm. And yet the finance minister, without blinking an eye, says, my budget proposals have not kicked in. What are they doing on the job? Are they sleeping on the job for the last four months? Sir, we, we, we have, we have always your, uh, heard, sir. sir. Please don't, sir, please please don't interrupt. Please, please come, please. Do not interrupt. Sir. If the budget proposals have not kicked in, you are responsible. All that we are saying is, we must do cash transfers now. You must do free distribution of rations now. You failed to do it last year, and the people of the country paid a huge price. And if you don't do it now, they will again pay a huge price. You said it for cash transfers are many, many, se several occasions we have seen, uh, even uh, in the last Lok Sabha elections, Rahul Gandhi came out with that nice scheme and even uh, Congress ruled states are following it. Uh, do you suggest for uh, printing notes, sir? Is this the right time to print notes? That depends upon the cash position. I read yesterday that the government of India has about 4 lakh crore cash surplus with the Reserve Bank of India. First, use that 4 lakh crore. Second, borrow more. Hmm. There's no reason why you should not borrow more. If you have projected a fiscal deficit of 
This year, fiscal deficit, the year ended, was already 9.3. So between 5.5 and 9.3, you have space to borrow another 1%, 1.5%. So borrow more. Failing step one and step two, you, if necessary, you print money. Hmm. Why does the sovereign government of the country have the power to print money? If you don't use that power now, when will you use the power? Why have a power which you will never use? Therefore, first, use your cash surpluses. Number two, borrow. Number three, if necessary, print money. Print money. That, that, that are suggestions uh, made for you. And the opposition, is, especially the Congress party, believes that yes, there should be a cash transfer. But the government, what, what I have learned, what I have attended the press conferences by Nirmal Sitaraman or uh, by the government, they said that, yes, we have a stimulus package. And if you want money, you can, uh, be, you can lend it from, from the banks. We will not give you the stimulus package. If you want money, you can borrow it from the banks. The government is wrong. They were wrong last year. They are wrong this year. Go to a bank and drop, borrow money. Let us see who... Who will lend you money today? Which MSME has a balance sheet on which any banker will lend money? Which individual has a balance sheet? Which poor family has a balance sheet? Which lower middle class family has a balance sheet of assets and liabilities on which a banker will lend money? Please take your, uh, uh, I don't know, if you've got domestic help or somebody in the area, Please take a, a man who uh, does a daily job or uh, is a gardener or a, a plumber and take him to a bank and please ask the manager to lend him money. Let us see who will lend money. Right, sir. Now, uh, coming on to the next part of this interview, sir, the vaccination process. You tweeted that, yes, there should be a CAG inquiry. Rahul Gandhi said that the vaccination process is not on the right track. What should be the right track, sir? I did not say there should be a CAG inquiry. I said there should be a CAG audit. Right. Audit of three numbers. What? There are two manufacturers in India. What did they produce every month? Number two, what did they dispatch every month? Number three, to whom did they dispatch and what quantity was dispatched? This is simply an audit. Not an inquiry, not an inquisition. Right, sir. Not I an correct. investigation. It's an audit, you let, demand it. Let these three numbers be given to us, and we will know whether enough is being produced and enough is being delivered. Mm -hmm. Every state government says, I have no vaccine. But private corporates are saying, we are going to vaccinate all our employees and our business partners and their families. How are they getting vaccines? I want to know. I don't know. You are not asking the questions. I'm asking the question. Where are the private companies getting vaccines when state governments are not able to get vaccines? Well, well point, sir. Sir, opposition leaders demanded from the center government and especially from the prime minister that uh, the power to procure the vaccines by the states should be allowed. The government has given a go ahead. Now the states, I've heard Mr. Captain Amrinder Singh, the Chief Minister of Punjab, Ashok Gehlot from Rajasthan, Arvind Kejriwal, the Chief Minister of Delhi, saying it's not possible. Uh, the companies have denied. They sh don't you think there should be a national policy for procurement and rolling out the whole process of vaccination in the country? I don't know which state government wanted the power to procure. As far as I know, every state health minister or finance minister or chief minister who spoke on the subject said center must procure distribution within the state must be left to the state i've written about it i've spoken on the subject i've tweeted i've always maintained that the center alone can procure and i've given the reasons i said when there are two manufacturers and there are 30 buyers it's a monopoly, it's an oligopoly of two manufacturers and 30 buyers. How do you expect 30 buyers to compete and buy? How can Maharashtra compete with Mizoram? What will Mizoram get? Even a state like Tamil Nadu, which has procured, a, which has floated a tender, has not got any vaccines at all. Therefore, procurement was never the demand of state governments. 
distribution was a demand of state governments. Please don't mix up procurement and distribution. Right, sir. The center must procure a lot on a rational basis to the states and leave it to the states to decide how the vaccines will be utilized. Right, sir. You have tweeted on uh, this oxygen availability that was uh, quoted by the center and many of the states. We have seen, sir, during the peak of this COVID-2, patients gasping without oxygen, though India is one of the largest producers of oxygen. Priyanka Gandhi, too, attacked the Prime Minister, said that, yes, what was the need? Do you think that the month of January and February, we should have taken a step, at least a policy uh, decision, that we would not be uh, exporting oxygen? See, export of oxygen was one issue on which uh, Ms. Priyanka Gandhi has tweeted. I don't want to add to that. What she said is valid. But look at the remaining capacity in India. We have enough oxygen producing capacity. Except that nobody in the central government thought that there will be an oxygen shortage. Because they have no planning at all. There is no planning commission. And Niti Aayog is completely incompetent to do any plan. So they had no plan at all. If oxygen becomes a very major constraint, how do we produce oxygen? How do you store oxygen, liquid or otherwise? How do you transport oxygen? How do you put it in cylinders? How do you take it to hospitals? How does the hospital administer to a patient? Somebody with some common sense should have sat down and written step one, step two, step three, three. step four and kept a ready plan. So the moment the first oxygen shortage surfaced, they should have implemented the plan. It's only after thousands and thousands of patients were running around looking for oxygen and the patient had to carry the oxygen when seeking admission to the hospital that the government woke up and said, oh my God, we forgot oxygen. What are you a government for if you can't plan that oxygen will become a constraint? So my final and uh, last question to you, sir. Government claims that, yes, by December 2021, we would be vaccinating uh, the country and every citizen of the country would be vaccinated first. The second part of this, are we late? Are, are we too late to order the vaccines? UK and US uh, ordered their vaccines in 2020 June. We ordered in January 2021, sir. Absolutely right. I pointed it out. We placed our order on the 11th of January, if I remember right. Whereas the US, UK, Europe and Japan placed orders last May and last June. They have not answered our question, why did it take seven months for you to place an order? I'm not even talking about placing an order on foreign suppliers. I'm talking about placing an order on the two Indian suppliers, namely Serum Institute and Bharat Biotech. Why did you not place orders on them? All right, you placed an order in January. When did you give them advance money? You gave them advance money on April 28. So they gave money only a month ago. And those guys have been crying for a capital subsidy or a grant or whatever for the last several months. You don't give them a pie. You don't give them an advance. America gave $2 billion, $2 billion to Pfizer and blocked all the vaccines. We were hopelessly late. In fact, among the big countries, we were the last to place an order for vaccine and to order the vaccine. All right, that is over now. Thank you so now, much, sir, Mr. Ch say, Thank you so much. Please uh, don't interrupt. Will you please sir, don't interrupt. Sir, sir, please quit. They want to vaccinate everybody by the end of the year. Good luck to them. Are they going to give two doses to everybody or one dose to everybody? Two doses will require 216 crore vaccines. We've been asking them to give us month-wise supply of vaccines. Supreme Court has asked them today. So let them give the numbers before we accept their statement, their claim, that they will be able to vaccinate everybody. I want them to vaccinate everybody, but give us data to support your claim. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Chitamram, for joining us on ITV and giving your views on economy, unemployment, GDP numbers, global effect of pandemic, and vaccination. Thank you so much, Mr. Chitamram, for joining ITV Network.
थैंक यू हमारे साथ देश के पूर्व वित्त मंत्री पी चिदम्बरम साहब थे उन्होंने बताया कि वैक्सीनेशन का प्रोसेस कैसे धीमा हुआ वैक्सीनेशन की जो डोजेस थी उसके लिए ऑर्डर्स पहले नहीं दिए गए इकोनॉमी को लेकर उन्होंने बताया कि जिस तरीके से इकोनॉमी चल रही है बहुत डार्क है यानी अंधकार है आगे साथ ही साथ उन्होंने बताया कि इस वक्त जरूरत है कैश ट्रांसफर्स की यानी गरीबों के अकाउंट में डायरेक्ट पैसा भेजा जाए और जरूरत पड़े तो नोट भी छापनी पड़े एक छोटा सा ब्रेक आप देखते रहिए इंडिया न्यूज़